Hello everyone, Marcus Wolf here, welcoming you all back to another episode of... Um, I don't know what I'm playing anymore. <laughs> Dis Disco Elysium! Oh boy, that's a great sign, isn't it? I <laughs> My mind is still stuck on Chrono Cross, which was the last game I played, so... <laughs> a bit bad. Anyway, last we left off, we got her in our own apartment through blinding um lights and we talked to a lady called o o orang orangye whatever her name is i don't remember i'm so sorry looks like she left a nice long stub in the ashtray still smoking yay am i gonna smoke it <laughs> hello i'm trying to i'm trying to break in <laughs> oh and i also learned that i'm an amnesiac apparently and was an officer. What kind of officer? I don't know. But the fact that this is kind of like we're a blank slate amnesiac, we could probably be any kind of officer we want. There's something on the table. D no, no, no. Yes. Oh, there we go. We got some money. Yay. 40 real. Revachol. Zone of control. Zero degrees centigrade. Black ice warning. Oh, so those are just weather reports. Oh, that's cool. Zero de I don't know centigrade. I don't know centigrade, so I don't know how cold that is. But if it, if it can give black ice warning, it must be cold. <laughs> Interesting that they went with centigrade. I mean, it, it they said... Um... Oh, God. Oh, there's the shoot. Wow. Why am I hearing a loud blaring horn in my ear? <laughs> Take all the right foot green shoe. Green snake skin shoes. A gust of briny wind washes over you. Why does this why does this music remind me of like patriotic music? <laughs> there they both are. Two identical shoes. Both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet, like two baby crocodiles. Conceptual... Okay, conceptualization, like two baby cro... Sure. <laughs> uh, wait. These don't look like normal cop shoes. It's pretty clear a normal cop is not what you are. Eh, fair enough. So, tell me, who exactly are they fitting? Good. They're balanced. Comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. To be fair, that's not what I was quite asking, but okay, you at least answered the question in a different way. I, I thought it was like, how am I wearing them? It's like, huh? It's like, oh, okay. Uh, well, what the question was, how do they feel on me? One composure and minus one savoir-faire. Sa Yay. Okay. And I also have a journal entry? Monday? Done? Oh, to find a shoe. Okay, I see. Oh, that's nice. I got the journey on Monday, 818. It took me 16 minutes to find a shoe. <laughs> Was it six? Yeah, 16 minutes. <laughs> wow, my math failed immensely. Okay, so that's cool. That's cool. So we found a shoe. I guess we just continue journeying. And while I do that, uh, before I pick this option, I gotta say, I do like this game so far. It's definitely reminiscent of a point and click. Uh, I didn't I didn't get my thoughts out before in the previous episode, but it really reminds me a lot of Dungeons & Dragons. Dice rolls to pass skill checks, uh, choosing your own dialogue, and basically having a dungeon master, which in this case is that... that... that otherworldly voice that keeps narrating the game and the funny th he thing here is the char the main character is actually conversing with the dungeon master like the dungeon master actually exists <laughs> which i i suppose in in um dungeons and dragons world that makes sense because the dungeon master is all the npcs and 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 uh, 90 percent of the time the evil characters like all the npcs and everything so the characters are talking with the dungeon master, but they're talking with the dungeon master in, in, in the capacity that, oh, that's the lowly villager. Oh, that's the thief trying to kill you, you know? Here, the main character is just talking to the narrator. It's just 
talking, like having a conversation. The, 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 the narrator is an actual interactable character. It's very, it's very interesting. I, I don't remember ever seeing a game like that where the narrator themselves is an interactable, is an interactable entity, like literally it, um, interactable with based on your discussion uh, choices and i really liked it it's very unique i like that especially when the <laughs> when the narrator has his own flair with the way of talking it's like really nice the smell of the sea makes you dizzy well then get out of here man i don't even know your name which kind of irks me I, I don't know who he is and it doesn't help that he's an amnesiac so but you know what whatever fine we got our shoes um, I guess we can just walk around now. I don't know where I'm supposed to go, in perfect honesty. The door is closed. Let's just try breaking and entering. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Okay, sure. Let's knock. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on somewhere inside. Oh, okay, so she's busy. Okay, that never mind. And, and you see, I like that. That really is Dungeons and Dragons. It's your, uh, oh god, I forgot, dang it, I forgot what the term was. Uh, what is your natural perception that you don't intend to roll a dice for? You just happen to hear it in the surroundings. And if you are perceptive enough, then you can tell that, oh, she's having a shower. But if you were just not paying attention at that moment, it's like, okay, I, I don't know what she's doing, that's fine. You know, so you, you don't need to roll a dice here. It's just a natural, you either do or you don't. And I like that. It's really Dungeons and Dragons, but with a more drug-induced haste, sit, uh, urban life vibe. If if that that's the best way I can describe it. <laughs> this is the weekend edition of the satirical newspaper Trompe Le Monde. I hope that's how you pronounce it, because again, I did not study French in in high school or college. I studied Spanish and terribly. Where am I? Oh, okay. I, I thought I was around here somewhere in the, you know, picture. Hi, everyone! Okay. So, oh god, I almost dropped my mic. That would have been very bad. <laughs> so, we have the obvious here. These lights. This is where the lyrics would be. A big old karaoke mic just waiting for someone to sing into it. Oh! So, the... Upstairs is like the hotel hostel. Uh, well, she called it a hostel. And down here is a bar. A bar dining area. Okay, okay. I, 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 can, I can see what this place is now. The speaker is connected to the radio. The music is seasoned with static. You should totally sing karaoke here. The first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul. Alright, sure. Uh, my soul is... I don't know. <laughs> uh, my personal soul is... I like to think I'm modest. <laughs> exactly. It's measured, level-headed, and it needs to be heard through a PA system. Oh, for the... By other people. All right. PA system, though, that's oddly specific. Well, since you're recommending it, what should I be singing? You should sing the sad small church song from that tape you found. Thought it was obvious. Oh, of course, sure. They'll really get a gauge on my soul with that little hymn, now won't they? Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic small church song. Who's laughing now? No one. You would need another copy of the tape first, though. The one upstairs is destroyed. Fair enough. You know, see, and I like that, too, because I'm just ad-libbing. But I'm also act- I'm personally also actively talking to the narrator. So it's it's very interesting. Because <laughs> when, when I do these- when, when I do these ad-lib portions, usually I'm anticipating the character's response. I still am, in a sense, to the narrator, but I feel like I'm actually having a conversation when I when I make my- when I voice my answers. It's like, the narrator is actually talk- I'm talking to the game, and the game is talking back. It's very strange. <laughs> it's very strange feeling. It really is. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter. 
inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Everything is cool between you and this guy. He's a big fan. Make some small talk. No, we 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 were just not empathetic enough. Uh, hello. You the bartender? No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. He's very animated all of a sudden. This seems like a touchy subject. Oh, I see. I, sorry, I, I, I reversed the numbers. I thought the top number was my total. No, no, no. That That is the, uh, the benchmark. Alright, I, I just got composure. Huh. Well, what's the difference then? I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm only standing in. Alright. And where did this Sylvie person go? She just, you know... He shrugs. His eyes dart from left to right. This man isn't lying, but he is hiding something. Okay, she just... What? Care to finish that sentence? So now you're a cop. Oh, forget it. <laughs> uh, whatever. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it. Most likely on a wall. This is the great skewer. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola. The part of the world you are in right now. Oh, uh, well, thank you, uh, Omniscient Voice, for telling me we're at the Insulindian Isola. Where is that? The small steel tag says as much. The Great Skua. Stercoarius Skua. Hmm. Uh, anything I can do to help you with that by chance, sir? Look, your buddy is over there. He looks at the doors, where a man in a bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? W what do you mean, buddy? He pretends not to hear you. Concentrating on the bird instead. No, I'm not. He's very animated, all of us. I have three cafeterias to manage. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I know he was going to say, uh, where to, and they'll say, where is the cop? Okay, never mind, that's fine. Okay, well, thank you so much, sir, for your help. Such as it is. Let me read the menu on your board. The menu has been wiped clean. Only the word Monday is written. A woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today starts in a man's handwriting. Oh, well. That would make sense. This is a water cooler. A large bubble is rising to the surface. The door is bolted. A sign reads, Kitchen reserved for personnel until... Th Kitchen reserved for personnel until 1300. So basically, after 1300, it's it's open season. Anyone can go into the kitchen. That makes no sense, but okay. The soft part of an electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone's working. Inside, you catch a glimpse of Union paraphernalia, a strike poster, and some red pen pendants with two ends. Really, with two ends? I've never heard of that before. Okay, sure. <laughs> Sign reads: Mess hall reserved for Union members. Doors open, 1600, a.k.a. for- Whoa, 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 what are you doing? Wait, what's that? Well, there's clearly something on the other- Oh, wait, I did not see this. What? What is this thing? I, I should use tab more often. Anosafed. Is that a drug or a fire extinguisher? It's a healing item. I I'm- What? Uh, tools, interact, items. Where are my healing items? Uh, wait, no, I am conf- What? What? Equip. Oh, is it in my held? It's not in my held. I- Oh god, I got bullets. Oh. <laughs> well, something tells me that's gonna turn out well when I have a gun. <laughs> Just go trigger happy. Oh god, what is this? 
What the hell? <laughs> what the hell is this? I call upon all your knowledge. Produce fascinating trivia. What is this? Oh my god, this is... Very... It's very interesting. <laughs> That's the best I can put. I don't have any points to use, which is not surprising. Oh wow, Th this is interesting. Oh my god, this is literally- wow. This is like asking your dungeon master for extra information. Uh, what does it mean to be rhetoric? <laughs> you know, it's like, wow, it, that's cool. Oh, my he- okay, I, I have- no, 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 that's not healing. Oh, 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 I- oh. 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 I see. Well, it did say plus one health, so I did need that, but... Well, actually, I, it, that might have been a blessing in disguise. I was just clicking it because I thought it would take me to a healing menu. So that's how you use healing items. Okay, morale. Oh, God. Probably gonna have to drink myself to death to get morale back. And healing items. So these are where you use them. You just click them. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Yes, I know there's probably instructions to be read, but to be honest, when I play video games, I don't like reading instructions. I like... If I can get away with it, I like to... Learn as I go along. That That's just how I am. <laughs> so, for those of you that say I should just be reading the instructions for once in my life, sorry, that's honestly not how I play. <laughs> A bottle of rum has been knocked over. Beautiful dark liquid is spilling out. A man is sleeping at the table, wearing mud-caked boots and roll-down overalls. The back of his shirt reads, Wild Pines, encircled by a logo with, of a tree. A colorful piece of plastic is dangling from his carabiner. Mmm, makes your fingers itch. Carabiner? What's a carabiner? Is that a fanny pack? Or like the clip of a fanny pack? Or maybe not a fanny pack, because it, it says he's, uh, the wild pine, so he's probably, he's a dock worker. So not a fanny pack, but one of those, like, utility belts? Is that what a ca carabiner is? Huh. I've never heard of that word. Rolled out of his open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. Hmm. Well, let's pick up the pills. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. Oh, magnesium. Okay, so that gives us more. Ra okay, okay, that's fair. Well, thank you, sir. I've just picked up some magnesium. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. Now you tell me how it works? Are you serious? Well, okay, that's fair. Why didn't you give me that when I had a healing item, tutorial agent? Huh? Come on, where were you hiding? Why Why couldn't you have told me that earlier so I wouldn't have accidentally used a healing spray? <laughs> Ugh. It's a dock worker's ID, doubling as a shift card and a job permit. A young, able-bodied man stares back at you from the photo. Santiago S. John. Hmm. Well. This is a red check. It cannot be retried. Ah, uh, well, you know, that's actually fair, considering that, you know, he'd probably wake up if I... Let's take it! You fumble the <laughs> spring-loaded gate of the carabineer, but to no avail. The dangling items refuse to come loose. They just jingle in an ever-louder manner. That was a crit fail, are you serious? Like fucking sleigh bells. What are you doing? You're gonna get caught. No, duh! Stop finger-fucking him, officer! I'm responsible for these oaves and their stuff. Even Sleepy there. What? No, I, I, what, what was it? I, I, look, I was just checking to see if this man is feeling okay. <laughs> God dang it, cafeteria manager. God dang it. Oh, this is gonna be one of those games. Yo, look, we might be dealing with a criminal here, okay? So just... L let me work. Yes, sure. A criminal. He rolls his eyes and turns back to his activities. <laughs> I'm guessing that's what ha- I'm hoping that this game also takes inspiration from Dungeons & Dragons, that if there's a crit fail, something 
obscenely crazy would happen. I would assume the crit fail made this the obscenely crazy thing happening that the bartender is like, <laughs> oh my god. Physical instrument. Wake him up. Uh, 12. I have a 2, so I need a 10 or higher. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. This man could probably sleep soundly in a ship's engine room. Cool. Something tells me I could have used that ID card, but whatever. That's fine. The, the man is now watching us with stern eyes, making sure we do not, um, have summer door closed for the winter. No duh. This man is now making sure we're not creating any unwanted, uh, questionable advances on a, on a drunkard. Oh, that was unfortunate. The Royal Pinball Machine is unplugged. Hello, miss. Hello, sweetie. Oh, well, hello, miss. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. She nods towards the man in the orange bomber jacket. Oh, okay, bye, miss. Uh, thank you for being nice to me, even though you kind of saw me committing a crime by accosting a drunk man. <laughs> a bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. Jim Kitsuragi. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. On the sleeve of his bomber jacket, as well as on its back, are the same enigmatic white rectangles as on your blazer. Oh. So that means he's... we're working together? Alright, well if we are, I suppose a handshake is in order. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi. Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize he's waiting for your name. Eh, uh, let's just make up a name because I don't think it will go well to say, I don't know who, what my name is. It's, uh, it's like that Jackie Chan movie, Who Am I? Everyone just starts calling them, Who Am I? Who Am I? <laughs> who Am I? <laughs> God, I have not watched it in so long. I gotta watch that again. Jesus. Conceptualization. Invent a name for myself. I have six natural. So I need a five or higher. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange. Like a forest fire looming on the horizon. But mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it. But there are still many to go. That is so dramatic. <laughs> no, that is legit so dramatic. And I suppose that's a crit success. It's like, you squint your eyes. Name should be emblazing in gold and orange. Like a forest fire looming under her. It's so dramatic. <laughs> that's a crit success. Mm. I would, but I'm afraid it's not yet time. Okay, then. He processes the information, then disregards it. It looks like we had a little scheduling error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trying to meet up with you for two days, but you have been otherwise occupied. Thank you, disembodied voice, for that. Um, sorry, uh, do you mean him over there? Guy at the, uh, at the bar? Yeah, just talk to him. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Uh, what interviews? At the 57th, we like to prepare an initial list of persons of interest. And then just skim the surface. Prepare the field, get to know the players. You don't do that? Maybe it's not an inter-district practice. Oh, fair enough. Well, I'll be honest, I haven't fully done that yet. Okay, we'll have time for that after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? A dead body? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry, but I don't like dead bodies. 
sure. But did you take it down from the tree? Not personally, no. I, I did not personally take it down from the tree. So, the body is still in the tree? Assumedly, yes. Unless there's some sticky fingers that took it down. Where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. Seven days straight? Oh, of, of course, yes. S seven days straight. <laughs> uh, I just didn't want to compromise the scene yet until, you know, I had you as backup. <laughs> Uh, so, um, what are we supposed to be doing again? Talk to the manager. Then we go out back and take the body down. Okay, sure, but, um, you know, and, uh, and one quick question, Kim. How can you be so sure that I'm from the police? I mean, for all, for all you know, I could just be an active criminal undermining your investigation. I was sent here to meet a detective from Precinct 41. You have the insignia of the citizen's militia on your sleeve and on your back. He points to your jacket. I suppose you could be impersonating him. You could have gotten the insignia from the black market or forged it. But for now, I'm going to set those possibilities aside. I'm not from the Inspectorate General. Inspectorate General means internal affairs. What he's saying is he's not from the Rat Squad and isn't supposed to suspect such things. Oh, you mean the Rat Squad? No need for derogatory terms. They're only doing their job. No, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just saying what came to mind. Uh, anyway, you, you, you said insignia. Uh, these right rectangles on our sleeves? Yes. But... What kind of insignias are they? I mean, they're just rectangles. They're not just white rectangles. They bear a halogen watermark with the letters RCM and a pattern resembling the street grid of Ravachol West. Oh. I would ask you to step into the headlights of my motor carriage, but again, it's none of my concern. I just need you to do your job. Okay, but, uh, shouldn't I have a badge or something? I honestly don't think I have any. You mean you don't have a badge? <laughs> I'll be honest. It wasn't on me when I woke up. Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I would advise you to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Okay. Um. A another question, Kim. Uh, yes, I, I know. I, I said that last time, but just, just another one. I can't quite seem to remember anything uh, 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 about about this case. I can see you drank last night and the night before, and that you are still drunk now. But I have seen officers go through worse. Much worse. If you need something for your headache, there is a general store nearby. But as I said, the dead body should be our number one concern. Sure. Just to make sure you had the right person. Yes, I know, I know, I know, Kim, I'm sorry, but, you know, we're, we're thinking outside the box and all that. What have I told you that, as a kicker, I'm not really a police officer? We all feel that way sometimes. There is no such thing as a police officer, I'm afraid. What remains is that there is a dead body in the tree. Someone has to figure out who put it there. If we don't, no one else will. And then, soon after, dead bodies would be dangling from all the trees. But first, we have to take it down. All right, got it, Kim. Um, thanks for humoring me with all these questions. So, why don't you? Why don't? Why don't we let's just go ahead? You know, get my badge, get some other stuff, and get the body down down from the tree. I mean, he said seven days. Seven days is a long time to be up there. It's probably you know just falling apart now. Yeah, we should bring it down. After you, officer. Yeah, of course. Thank you. So investigate the cafeteria manager and the victim's body. Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him whenever by interacting with him. Oh, we have actual party members now. Oh, that is cool. Oh, that's cool. Yes. Ooh. You know what? I'm going to end the episode here because, well, you know, it's going on 30 minutes. And I'm thinking for a game like this where there's like, it's very text heavy i think probably 
I need to up my standard episodes to be about 30 minutes or more. Because, again, there's going to be a lot of dialogue, and I feel like my standard of trying to be, like, 20 to 25 is not going to be long enough. So, we're going to extend it a bit to be 30-minute episodes. Not Probably not as long as the first one, where we went to 45, 50 minutes, but that was, like, the pilot episode, if you will. The first episode, so double time. <laughs> okay, very interesting so far, and... I, I love that I got to talk to Kim Kitaragi and <laughs> to actually ad-lib my response. I, I love ad-libbing when I had to do responses. And it's just... It, it it invokes my own personal character into it. And I'm pretty sure this main character is not talking like I am. Like, oh, well, you know, just, just as a kicker. What if I'm not really a police officer, hmm? You know, I'm pretty sure he's not talking like that. But my voice, my style, my characterization. Hmm. <laughs> So yeah, I will see you all on the next episode where we will apparently jump feet first into a case of a body in a tree that's been dangling for seven days. Wow. Later, everyone.